Live from the Shark Club in downtown Vancouver, Everything Film is supported by Vancouver Acting School. Turn your passion into your career. Enroll now for post-secondary diploma programs in film, television, and voiceover. Season 2, Episode 4, Joe Leary along with Patrick Shelton of Everything Film and Film Robot. We are at the Shark Club in downtown Vancouver. And our guest is Jorge Ignacio Castillo, who is the chair of the Vancouver Film Critics Circle. And Say that three times fast, Oh, Joel. I will. Trust me, I will. I, you're good at that, I, actually. Did I get it pretty good on the first one? Oh, okay. he, he was practicing <laughs> it. Trust me, he's practicing it. Uh, but I, we have a common interest. The three of us have a common bond here because we're all connected with our good buddy Jim Gordon. Jim and Gordon, Jim yeah. Gordon, of course, is a Vancouver Film Critic as well. So you chair the Vancouver Film Critics Circle. Before we talk anything else... How many people does that entail, and what did COVID do to the Film Critics Association? Well, right now we are 15, um, because uh, the situation in the media in Vancouver, that the content that used to be taped on morning shows and weekly disappearing, all yeah. that's gone, yeah. so that we are a smaller group than we used to be. But it's, it's still going strong. And because of COVID, as it happened, it hits us right at the at the tail end of the process in which we vote so we missed two shows i mean we normally do it live the last two have been uh, uh via zoom the great thing uh, is that now the shows are like half an hour from the two hours they used to be but uh it's it it it's fine like uh, we ha as long we have had the we have we have been lucky enough to survive the process, which we which was always you know in doubt because of COVID. Well, it and, ended and, up so many and that must have really put a thorn in the side of the film critics industry because it put the f a thorn in the f side of the film industry because there was no films being released pr pr or no no major films being released. We had um, uh, we had a sh uh, the movie uh, the first NFT film Zero mm -hmm. Contact. Mm -hmm. uh, remember the uh, the show we were talking yes, about? Yes, yes. Okay, with uh, Alex Ponovic. Um, and that was done in a very co co clever way to utilize the fact that you couldn't be in a studio. You couldn't interact with each other, so they did it via Zoom. I don't think that's ideal, but I mean, you do what you have to do. But now, is the film industry back up? Is it 100%? Is it getting there? Uh, I think we're never going to get the 100% we used to. I think the movies that are going to get the, the theatrical distribution are the most expensive ones, the, the blockbuster or so. The mid-sized film that actually ended up going for award shows and whatnot and and depended on words of mouth that's gone basically and that space has been taken by the streamers like uh the netflix the prime videos the mm -hmm, mm -hmm, apple tv mm -hmm, those are right. taking the mid-sized film and the short and the ex the cheap films like the you know the budget films well you can see it happening right now joan i mean what's what happening like we were talking about even like some of the there was the show the Adam project and everything mm -hmm. we didn't know if that was gonna be in theater or not and then it went right to Netflix so these feature films that would have been in theater are going to prime and Netflix mm -hmm. and it's being circumvented and I like it for one but that's what's starting to happen and it's just like I don't even know when you with something in Vancouver where it's gonna be there's so many people mm -hmm. in the game now that you don't know where it's gonna show up right yeah. and, and that's not even necessarily the your issue or my issue yeah. is that the streamers themselves are yeah. are having challenges promoting their quest their, their 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 product because they have so many things coming out on every weekend then trying the, the, and trying to pu to publicize every single one of these movies or TV shows and they're they're finding challenges because and there's not even enough media to cover every right, single right, right. every single release so it's it's well, the a chain really of command flux. but the chain of command and when I say the chain of command, what I'm what I'm referring to is, you had a, a show in the theater, then it would go away for four weeks, then it would be on DVD. Right, mm -hmm. that was just how it was, and the reason why they did that, withheld it, is to make you go to the theater, obviously, mm -hmm. right, and then to you know give some time and then sell the DVD. That's all off now. All bets are off. No, and the windows are changing. Like uh, I, I was really reading an article this morning. Yeah. In fact, that. Uh, Mission Impossible 7, I believe, it was supposed to have, instead of the three more traditional months of theatrical release, it was going to have 45 days, and Tom Cruise actually lawyer up to get his three months mm -hmm. of a theatrical window. Right. Otherwise, because Paramount just wanted to put it on the streamer, because their streamer needs content. Uh, Jorge, I want to ask you a question you hit on earlier. I don't want to dump on the media because, hell, I'm in the media, but uh, let me ask you this. Why is there so little value today placed on pump people coming into studio, into TV studios to do 
film reviews because everybody sees films. Mm -hmm. There's why do they not value that anymore? I know I don't beyond the financial aspect of it, but why don't they not value that? Because everybody, everybody knows and wants to see film. There needs to be somebody that educates the process of the public on on what the film's about. It's very unfortunate, and it's a matter of there's too much, the demand there is not there's too much offer. Like I'm not exaggerating and. The truth is, you lift a stone and you find a film critic, mm -hmm. or somebody who calls themselves yeah, a film critic. Yeah, but that's you could, you could say that about every blogger. I mean, every, every everybody's a foodie now, that, as opposed to the old days of food right, critics and right. what have you. But I still think there's value there, and I'm you know I, I speak personally because you know Jim is a good buddy of mine, mm -hmm. and and Jim is not doing that anymore. But there should be more value placed on that. Oh, 100 percent. And there is and something that just happened very recently. Um, the Georgia Strait, as you know, is uh, a Toronto-based uh, Yeah, and it's gone down to about, it. it's about the size of a, of a program now. It used to be mm -hmm. like a full newspaper. Absolutely. And on top of that, they, they, are, out, they are using critics from um, Toronto. Yeah. They, they get yeah. reprinted for and the Georgia sure. Strait here, which obviously affected a, a, a number of critics that we were in our association. But the brilliant <laughs> part is that the, a recent film that they published, um, the, uh, Turning Red, Mm -hmm. set in Toronto, the Pixar film, and the f film review was extremely complimentary of Toronto, <laughs> 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 which will never have yeah. happened had yeah, a no, Vancouver critic read, written that review. Yeah, yeah. no, that's, that's true. You mentioned the Adam Project. I don't see a lot of film. I was telling Jorge, we're, we're going to talk Oscars, and I've not seen anything that's, that's nominated. But uh, I actually happened to watch the Adam Project. Uh, on it's, it's a Netflix show, is that yep. correct? Yeah. Yep. I didn't really get it. Maybe I, I didn't see the beginning of it. I sort of walked into the room when it was about you know 15 minutes in. I was sort of being told the story, the backstory. Um, what did you? What was your take on the Adam Project? Oh, it was really nothing special. Yeah, okay. There uh, you go. I, I Even though Ryan Reynolds, we love you. We'd love to have Ryan on the show to, to talk about it, but uh, just didn't really get it. No, and it, it was pretty standard sci-fi. The funny thing about that is that they had two supporting actors, um, Jennifer Garner and Mark Ruffalo, who did this fantastic. Romantic comedy, when romantic comedies were good, um, 13 going on 30. Mm -hmm. I was so much more excited about seeing those yeah, two together yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> than anything Ryan Reynolds was doing on the screen. Now, this you know what, I'm, I'm not going to blame the Adam Project, uh, and I'm not even going to call it. it. I'm not even going to call it this, but there is a genre of films that are just put in the can and put on, yep, right? So. And you get a couple good names, and... It's pretty but much um, what's what's it called? The formula, right? You put yeah. you put me on to you put me onto a couple of films on Netflix. Yes, uh, but they're deep. They're deep. These yeah. one was called The Invisible Guest. The Invisible Guest, one of my favorite films of the last ten years. And the, the other one was the it was a foreign language film. Yeah, oh, uh, no, you got me on the spot. Yeah, two of them. But anyway, you turned me on to two great. Do you watch a lot of Netflix? Um, as much as I can. Okay. Uh, I try. I try to. I try to keep up at least with the main titles, because sometimes you, you there's so much out, there's so much output I just miss. So I, I'll tell you one thing. If you think it's fun being a film critic, it sounds fun. It's not necessarily. Because I remember Jim Gordon, there's many a times we'd be meeting up. Can we get to you? Oh, no, buddy, i got to go check out. The screenings are at 10 a.m., usually on, on Fifth Avenue. And you You're have lucky. to see the films. <laughs> you have to see the films. You may not want to see the film. Right. You may not like the film, but you have to watch it. Well, the thing with um, The Invisible Guest, and I, I have to uh, say, and I want you to watch that. And okay. Just give me your give, give it's me a great your movie. It's a great movie. Um, it's, it's subtitled. Mm -hmm. It's Spanish subtitles. But one of the things, you got the subtitles on there. It's on Netflix. And you... you it's gone. Like the subtitles take over, and you don't even yeah. think of it that way anymore. Yeah. So yeah. it's kind of yeah. It's I don't it's like interesting. I, right? I mm -hmm. remember telling you I don't want to read a movie, but, but you said no, no. Trust me, Joe. Trust, trust me, me on it. this one, and I absolutely loved, loved it. And, it. The, and the other the one, we, so we've got to come up with the name of the other one too because that's a and that was a subtitled one too, and it was <laughs> Korean. It yes, was Korean. Was it was around. Yeah. It was around the same time as the one that won the Oscar. Yeah. Yeah. What was it? What was it? It wasn't Parasite, was it? No, it wasn't Parasite, but it was. It was like that, and it was. Um. Yeah. It'll come to me. And I mean, it was a random thought, Jorge. Nonetheless, okay. Let's talk. Uh, let's talk Academy Awards. Obviously, it's this weekend. Uh, this, this show airs. It is this weekend, um, and I think for the first time in a long time, I have not seen anything. Mm -hmm. I've not seen anything nominated, so I don't even know what's up. Uh, how many categories are? How many in the best film category? Have they expanded that? This year is going to be. They expanded it to ten to ten films. Ten. Normally, they don't use all the ten spots. This year, they did. Okay. Which sh which tells you a lot about the fragmentation of the of the market right now like of the 10 films i believe eight are linked to streamers okay so we're 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 in a situation in which 
and I know this is like the common, the, the very, the, the, the common place that everybody goes. Like you can't really guess who's gonna win. This year, you can't really guess who's gonna win okay. because it's such a, div a diverse um, number of films. And here, in this particular case, we are you're in a situation in, in which the the way you vote is gonna determine the winner, not who you vote, because you vote. Want, you vote one to ten. You, right. your, your order, who likes the who you like the most, to who you like the least. If it was for this, the winner will be the power of the dog. Easy. Okay. Okay. But it's a very divisive film. So when you have the situation, who's going to win? The, the film that generates the least antibodies. And in that case, it's going to be Coda, which is a film about uh, the daughter of uh, deaf parents. It's a cute, cutesy, almost hallmark like mm -hmm. film. But that doesn't generate any antibodies. So yeah, of course that was going to be in the middle of the pack. Right. It's going to ride into Best Picture Cut winner. I, I like movies with you know killers and car chases. So I guess I wouldn't be a good film critic, would I? Uh, not necessarily. <laughs> there's, there's good stuff in there. Uh, okay. Uh, you, we, as we record this show, uh, this is the day of the big Billie Eilish concert uh, just down the street across from the Shark Club here. You were saying uh, off air, Jorge, that you think she's going to win the a Academy Award for Best Song. Absolutely, yes. And I haven't even seen the Bond film, and I, I haven't even heard the song. But to me, we were talking about this off air, and you would agree, Patrick, the Bond songs are associated with, they're as good to me as, as the films are. Mm -hmm. They, they kind of work together, but you said this one was kind of, eh. It does, I, I, I'll be hard-pressed to, to remember a bar. Yeah. <laughs> but, she's gonna win. Uh, but she's going to win. But she's yes. going to win, yes. And for example, if you ask me about the Chris Cornell, the yeah. Casino Royale, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. The Adele one in oh, Skyfall. 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 Masterful. Masterful. Bob, Masterful. Shirley Bassey, Goldfinger, 1964. That to me is the killer, killer Bond song. Okay, what, what do you think is going to win the Academy Award? If, in your humble opinion, what do you think is going to win? The best picture. Who's going to win? Yeah. 100%? None. Okay, okay. 75. Yeah. Yeah. Coda. Coda. If, not, if it's not Coda, it's going to be Belfast. Because that's Belfast, also yes. I've also heard of Belfast. I've heard of that. Also, Ken yeah, yeah. yeah. Also, you know, also, also, it's sympathetic. Like you, no, you won't hate that movie. So it, it may also just go under the radar and win. Okay, because of what the nature of your your work, you're the chair of the Vancouver Film Critics Circle. Uh, it's unfair to say what's your all-time favorite film. It's like saying who's your favorite child. You can't you can't single <laughs> one out. But you must have a few rolling in your head oh, yes. that are a top of your list. Give us give us a few of your top films of Absolutely. all time. The thing is that I, I do I actually have one, and it's not gonna it's not gonna be something that you remember. It's called okay. Pump of the Volume, but that's ha, that has Pump a lot. To oh, I know it. I yeah, do remember yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, that has to do with uh, my personal story because I was a, I was a, a teen in a small town in Chile, feeling a little bit of bit of an outsider. Yeah. And then I watch this movie, and it it, it kind of make a click. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That to the point I had to see it again right. immediately after. And yeah, oh, oh, okay. So uh, there are people so who think pump, like pump up the volume. Pump up okay. the volume. Yeah. Okay. Then it will be uh, almost famous. Yeah. Yes. Because yeah, that's a great movie. Because I mean, I yeah. used to be a cab reporter, yeah. so I yeah. can I relate to all of yeah. all of yeah. that uh, before sun before sunrise. I've I've heard of it. I've not seen it. Okay. Absolutely love that. Film. I'm seeing a pattern here. I'm seeing a pattern you here <laughs> of what you like. Uh, melancholia. Yeah. Okay. There uh, you melancholia go. Melancholia blo yeah. blows my mind. Yeah. And I gotta go with Parasite. I thought it, I thought it was a yeah. fantastic yeah, film. Very film. Parasite's very interesting. Parasite's very I'll give you my top two, and I Should and be. I do I do know this, and they're they're so opposite each other. Sunset Boulevard, mm -hmm. Billy Wilder that film. It's such a well written. I well, saw it not long ago again. Okay. It's such a well written film. It's a movie that starts with the end, so you know how it ends, and then that just shows you the backstory mm -hmm. that leads up to it, and it's a real real dark tale of Hollywood. Sunset Boulevard and Fast Times at Ridgemont High, just for comic relief. Sean Penn's performance just knocks me out. Mm -hmm. what, what's, I, don't, I just can't put you on the spot. What are your couple we, we, it, It's interesting. What happens for me in a movie, and I, and I see this going over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. You are a certain age at a certain time, at the right time and everything, and it's probably about that 14-year-old, 15-year-old, maybe 16 and mine was like it is. I think the greatest movie that I ever saw that I went to the theater was probably Raiders of the Lost Ark, the first movie. one. Great movie. And you know, there's been many great films, but I'm saying that was the movie that I went, "Oh my God, is that rock rolling? Like what? What? Oh my God!" Right? Like, and I wanted to run back and go see the Absolutely, show again. Absolutely, yes. Right? It was that. And um, the next generation, I'm you know, without giving my age, a lot of people I talk that 
with, they say The Matrix. They say The Matrix was changed their life and that was the show that brought in animation mm -hmm. and they just mm -hmm. saw something yeah. they never saw before. Not for me, but yeah. they got that same feeling, no, that's right? Fair. That's fair. You know? it's a, I think a movie is a personal experience. And if you, can, if yeah. you can relate to like it Like pump up the volume yeah, for you, if that, right? If that's that just what you can something. identify with. That, and someone might go, pump up the volume? you kidding, man? You're a critic? And that's, yeah, that, yeah. But it has a special significance to yeah. you. But it's when you saw it, yeah. too, right? Yeah. And, and the best... I mean, the most honest way to yeah. to review a film is from a pr from your personal perspective. How how did it affect you? Like, there's no way you can objectively uh, review a film. Well, now let me ask you in the uh, the late great uh, Siskel and Ebert uh, companionship there. Uh, they would do the thumbs up. Your Good review day. of everything film so far today. Your first experience on our show. What will we, what will we get? Oh, five stars. Five stars. There, there you go. go.